Now, the third point of sure victory uh, is God has a wonderful plan for our lives. That God has a wonderful, super, super wonderful life, uh, plan for our lives. But a lot of people don't believe that. It's a fact that even Christians don't <coughs> think that they are important. First point is, we only have one life to live. Uh, only one time. Now sometimes people say, well, I'm just a household worker. Uh, I, some of us here, I know that you have good education. But some of us don't have good education and say, well, my education is limited. I have limited ability. So my life is just, you know, it's nothing. I cannot do much with my life. But actually, God doesn't plan it like that. Everyone has a chance to live out a wonderful, the, uh, the wonderful plan that God has for us. And we have one life to live, and one time only. Can you relive this morning again? Or the praise and worship time, can we go back to that time at that, uh, you know, at 10.30 this morning? Can we go back to that time? You know, said I didn't praise God uh, with all my heart at that time. Can I go back to 10.30 now? No. Actually, we cannot even go back to the time when I first stepped on the stage here. That it's already passed. So everything, the moment I said the moment is passed, already the sentence is passed, right? <laughs> When you think of it, every time when we say a word, it's already in the past. When we say it, immediately it go in the past. So we only have one chance to live this life. And we can live uh, brilliantly. And Christians can feel lost about life. You know, say, oh, what can I do? I've heard many Christians say, I don't know what to do with my life. I, I have no direction. I, uh, I find that my life is in a mess. All kinds of problems. Now, there are ways to take care of any kind of problem. And there is no reason for us to say, I'm nobody. I cannot live out my life to the fullest. We can all live out our life to the fullest. And then, some people say, you know, uh, you know, actually, uh, this is a fact. We have no control. Can you have, do you have control over your future? We don't know what our boss, bosses will do to us. We don't know what our health, how it, our health is in the future. We don't know how our family will be in the future. We have no control. Then some people say, well, I have no control, so what can I do? But the point is, God has full control. Even though we have no control, it doesn't matter. God has full control. And when people, Christians don't know God's wonderful plan, they might miss God's perfect plan because we'll say, well, I'm nobody. I cannot do much. I, you know, I'm too weak, uh, I have limited wisdom, I don't have many gifts, and then, and then they say, well, I just live day by day, I just uh, eat and work and sleep, and that's how some people live. Every day, just do the routine things and don't have direction. Do you have direction in your life? Do you believe that God has a wonderful plan in your life? Amen. I hope that we all believe that all the time, not just sometimes. Some people believe that when they are, you know, uh, in a church. When a message is preached, they say, yes, I have a wonderful plan. But when they do the daily chores, and then they say, well, it's too much work. Uh, it's too much, oh, it's every day doing the same thing over and over again. Oh, I have no control over my life. Then some people will lose direction. But Psalm 139, 16 to 17, uh, let's read together. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to me. How precious to me are your thoughts. God, how vast is the sum of them. So here it says that all the days ordained for me were written in your book. All the days of our lives. Written for me, uh, ordained for me, planned for my life. It's already written in your book, in heaven. Amen. In heaven. Now some people have gone to heaven and they saw the book they have. That according to them, they saw that in the book, God has from before they were born, it's already recorded. God has a wonderful plan in his life. Mm -hmm. And then how God brought about this person to, to be born, to be 
conceived and then came on earth and how God has written down uh, his life, her life. And also, God has recorded uh, what um, experiences these people go through. Sometimes these people were hurt, they have disappointment, despair in life, and they were surprised to find that God recorded that in heaven, in his book. That actually the Bible does say that. That all these, you know, that uh, uh, I memorized it in Chinese, that all the tears are stored in the bank of God, and then all these are written in his book. So all these, all the tears we have, all the suffering we have is all written in the book of life. And also our future is already, God has a wonderful plan in our life. And how precious to me are your thoughts. So God doesn't just write uh, nothing important. This person is, has nothing important. Uh, he, well, cannot do great things. He comes up with a lot of failures. Uh, his marriage is a uh, problem, big problem in his, in his life. Now, would God write things like that? No, God would not write that, you know, that your life is all failure and problems and difficulties and cannot make use of your life. No, God doesn't write that. It says right here, how precious to me are your thoughts. That God has many thoughts and all these thoughts are very, very wonderful. Amen. So can you say to the person next to you, God has very wonderful plans for your life. Hallelujah. And please, say it to yourself. God has a wonderful plan in my life. My life is very, very precious. My life is very, very precious. Very special. Nobody can replace my life. Nobody can take a place. We are unique and special. The only you. Only you. <laughs> only you. Only you can live out the plan God has for you. Only you. So, think of this song. Only you. <laughs> Hallelujah. And God is so, how vast is the sum of them? That God is wonderful plans. His thoughts are so vast in number. So many, many thoughts. So this morning, God has a wonderful plan in your life. Amen. Now, Amen. one time, I thought, you know, I heard people have accidents. And then I say, accidents could happen to us, to me. And then I say, well, when accidents happen to me, does God have that written down in his book? And I, of course, you know, God, uh, you know, God doesn't cause bad things to happen into our lives. Bad things happen because of man's sin. Before man sinned, there was no uh, sins and no problems in life, in the world. There's nothing. But it's only after man sinned, and then we have all kinds of problems. So God doesn't cause problems to happen. But because of man's sin and because of Satan's work and because of sinner's work in this world, so all kinds of misfortune happen. All kinds of unfortunate things happen to our lives. And this don't come from God. But in all these things, God has a wonderful plan. Even though sometimes we were hurt by people, but God still has a wonderful plan to bless us in spite of the difficulties. And also behind each difficulty, there is a wonderful plan of God. Amen. So we, if we believe in this word of God, then we believe that God has a wonderful plan in spite of any kind of difficulty, any kind of limitation. Can, can we say it together? God has a wonderful plan for me in spite of all difficulties. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, now Romans 12, 1 to 2. Let's read together. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test 
and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So here it talks about three things we do. Can you tell me the three things we can do here? Actually, it's in yellow. First, to offer our bodies as living sacrifice. And then second, do not conform to the pattern of the world. And then, for the renewing of your mind. And then, we'll be able to test and approve God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. So I ask you this question. So what if we don't offer our bodies as living sacrifice, that we follow the world, we are, you know, we conform to the world, and the, our mind are not transformed. Then can we follow this perfect plan of God? No. 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 Now, do all Christians automatically go into the perfect will of God? Yes. Yes. According to this verse, what do we need to do? To go into the perfect will of God. First, offer our bodies. Offer our bodies. Now, do all Christians offer the bodies no. No. totally to God? No. no. Second point, what do we do? By serving Him. Uh, look at the Bible verse. Holy and that's, that's God's. Okay. And then, do not conform to the pattern of this world. And then be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let me ask you: Do all Christians not follow the world? Is it true that all Christians don't follow the world? No. No. no many Christians do follow the world. Are affected by the world. Are, are all Christians transformed totally by God? No. No. So if we don't follow this, can we test and approve God's perfect will? No. So, God has the most perfect will. Actually, the most perfect will. Do you think most Christians follow that? No. Usually, actually, is the minority. Yes. It's a sad fact. Have you seen Christians' life messed up? All kinds of problems, emotional problems, yes, yes, yes. interpersonal problems. Yes. And does it happen to us too? Yes. Yes. Have we followed God totally since the day we were converted? No. No. So, are we following the most perfect will of God? No. So, when we, the more we sin, the more we fall from the most perfect will of God. But when we follow God again, when we trust in God more and have a good relationship with Him and follow Him, we can go back more to the, uh, closer to the original plan. But let me ask you. When we look at some people's lives, they have messed up the life in such a way. Do you think they can go back to the best, perfect will that God has planned for their lives? Yes, yes. yes. they are willing. Yes. Think about this. If a person is already 60, 70 years old, and then he said, I now I want to dedicate my life to God. Compared to if, we, if the person is totally dedicated to the Lord since he was converted, is there a difference? Yes, yes, yes. Can he go back to the, the best original will? <laughs> if a person marry a non-Christian, can he follow the perfect will of God? No. no. Because he has limitations, right? <laughs> if a person has committed serious sins, and then he repented, can he still go back to the most perfect plan of God? Yes. 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 If a person has committed adultery, He's put in jail, or people don't have trust in him. Is it easy for him to go back to the most perfect will of God? No, no, no. 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 no trust. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, we can fall from the most perfect plan of God, but still God has a second best, and third best, and a fourth best, and so on. Mm -hmm. So God has the most perfect plan of God. The earlier we follow God totally, the closer we'll be to the most perfect plan of God. Now think of your life. If you are totally dedicated to the Lord and have the joy of the Lord every day and not affected by people and, and really serve the Lord and be filled with the Holy Spirit right from the beginning and then carry the power of God to bless people, think of your life. Would it be quite different from your life now if you had followed God totally right from the beginning? Would it be very different from now? Yes. 
And that was the most perfect plan of God. If we had followed Him totally, that was, would be the most perfect plan of God. But most of us have not followed the most perfect plan of God. Let me ask you, is your life totally full of joy and praise and freedom and love and worship for God? Is your life totally full of this yes. elements? Is it totally full of these elements? From morning to night time that you're always praising God, loving God, full of joy, full of peace, full of love. Are you like that all the time? <laughs> Most of us are not. Because we're not aware, we're not aware of this perfect plan of God. So very often we fall short of the glory of God. Now think of the saints in heaven, would they be all, you know, praising God, very joyful, no burden? Would it be like that? Would they be like that? The saints in heaven, would they be very, you know, joyful and peaceful and full of love? Yes. 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 Now, God's plan actually is that all Christians would live like that, right? Full of love, full of peace, full of joy always blessing people, always have a good connection with God. That's God's perfect plan. But so very often, we don't think like that, right? We think we're just ordinary people. We think we cannot do much. Do we have this mindset? A lot of times we say, I'm too ordinary. I cannot have joy all day long. I have too many problems. People are not nice to me. Do we have this kind of mindset affecting us sometimes? We do, sometimes. Let me ask you, do many Christians have total freedom? Total freedom, total, full of joy and love? Not many Christians, even today, right? Even today, even after the sermon, <laughs> we might not be living in perfect peace and joy. You might say that's too hard, but actually, it's hard if we try without efforts. But if we say, every moment I trust in the Lord, I love God, I follow God, everything I ask God what to do, then we can be as close as possible to this perfect plan. I'm saying, by our efforts, it's impossible. But if we trust in God all the time, if we have close connection with Him all the time, and really obey Him in every, every way, and take away all selfish, Self-centered thoughts. Do we have selfish, self-centered thoughts? Yes. If we take care of all this and all kinds of sins and really put God in the first place in our life, we can start to follow as close as possible to the perfect plan of God. Can you, can you see how important this teaching can affect us? So many Christians are not aware of that. So yes. a lot of Christians waste our lives. A lot of Christians just look sometimes almost like an animal. <laughs> Eat and sleep, have fun, and waste the time, right? But if we have a plan, God's plan, I believe that every day God has a plan in my life, then I will live it to the fullest. Can you see the difference? There is a big difference. If we really put this into our mindset, totally saying, wow, God has a wonderful plan written in heaven. Now look at this book here. There's a book. One day we'll see the book. And you say, Oh Lord, I didn't know you had such a wonderful plan for my life. It's so wonderful. How come I only live out so little? Would you think that way? If you, if you look at our lives right now, do, we, do you think that we are close to that perfect plan of God? A lot of people are not quite close, right? But if we have this mind to say, yes, Lord, you have a wonderful plan. I told, remind myself, I live in the love of God. I live in a wonderful plan of God. Uh, my life can be full of joy and strength and uh, ability to affect people. And I am connected to God all the time. <coughs> we can live like that. So that would affect our whole lives. And I hope that today's message will help us to, this, to have this mind to believe that God has such a wonderful plan. So here, 
when I look at Romans 12, 1 to 2, God gave me this idea that there was a plan A, the most perfect plan A. Think about your life. If we have followed God right from the beginning, totally, then it will be plan A. Can you imagine, picture that in our mind. If we had followed God totally right from the beginning, how different would it be? Would it be very different from now? Yeah. Would it be very different, right? Yes. So, some of us are in plan B, C, D, but if we have made mistakes in our lives or we haven't followed God totally, we go back maybe to LMOPQ. <laughs> <laughs> so, and when we have married a non-Christian, now some of us have no choice because we married before we were converted. But if we, after we were converted and we know the teaching and then we marry a non-Christian, then it affects our lives totally. Even people who marry before they were converted, they have a difficult time, right? It's difficult to be married to a non-Christian. So it will be a time of testing for you, a time of trial that you really trust in God every day and follow God every day so that we can bring more love and the, and the blessing of God to the family. And I hope that we all remember this every day. I'm, you know, the first point of true sure victory is that we all can enjoy God's love every day. We live under the love of God and enjoy His love. And second point is God will give us all kinds of blessings. And the third point is that he has a most wonderful plan. So every day I can remind myself, God has a wonderful plan. Even when difficult things happen, even when unfortunate things happen, we can still say, yes, I still have a wonderful plan for today, for now. Most important thing is for now. Let me ask you. God's perfect plan for now. How is the plan, God's perfect plan for you now, right now, this moment? But this moment is that we'll all be like sponges, absorbing the Word of God, absorbing the message of God, and really say, my life is so wonderful, and I can follow Him totally, and I can totally devote my life to God, and, and have a good connection to God. And don't, not to look at the failures and our sins, but to say, Lord, please forgive me, and give me a new beginning again. Mm -hmm. And when we follow God totally, He can bless us in every way. Hallelujah. Okay, now look at this chart. Lazy Christian, how much should they make use of their life? Very, very little. Very little, right? So, for many Christians, they pray for a few minutes every day. So think about how much time we spend praying to God. How much time we think about God. How much time we follow God? But then for devoted Christians and also a Christian who have the direction of God, his life can be used to a much greater, greater extent, far beyond an ordinary Christian. Especially when he has a close relationship with God. Especially when he carries the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And also when he waits for the Lord more, he can hear God's voice and then do specific things God directs him to do. And then have specific plan and strategy for his life. His life can be extended to a degree far beyond the imagination of an ordinary Christian. That our life can go to that level. So don't say that because of my limited education, because of my work, because of my family problems, because of my uh, lack of wisdom, I cannot go to that point. We can all go to that point if we spend much time praying to God, waiting for the Lord, loving the Lord, following Him every day. And it's the best thing we can do to our lives. On the contrary, sometimes people will say, wow, it's, everyone has selfish thoughts. Oh, everyone gets angry sometimes. Everyone uh, gets emotional sometimes. So it's normal for me to be emotional. Sometimes you will just say, this is normal. But the point is, the more we are in emotions, in naked thoughts, in sins, the more we are ripping up ourselves off the blessings of God. That we are pulling away ourselves away from the most perfect plan of God. That His perfect plan is so wonderful. 
So for me now, I want to say, Lord, I want to follow your life, your plan totally. Whatever you have planned for me, I want to be in that most wonderful, perfect plan. Do you want that? Amen. And this perfect plan, the first most important thing is to have a good relationship with the Lord. Not service. The first thing is not to serve the Lord. The first thing is to have a very close, intimate relationship with God. Really love the Lord with all our hearts. And wait for the Lord and let God speak to us. And whenever God tells us not to sin, not to lie, not to get angry, not to mistreat other people, immediately we respond and say, Lord, I obey you right now when your voice comes to me. Let's think about this. When the voice of God comes to us and say, don't get angry, don't tell a lie, how long does it take for us to respond? Do we re usually respond in one second? Usually, sometimes God keeps telling us, don't get angry with Him, forgive Him. Sometimes it takes a long time for us to respond, right? So that hinder us, hinder us from getting the following the perfect plan of God. And that's why some people can follow God so closely. But some people are so far away. The, more, the farther away a person is from God, the harder it is for him to follow God. Now, hear this again. The farther away from God, when we are from God, the harder it is for us to follow God. What do I mean? I mean, when a person is really close to God, Whenever the person prays, he will experience the love and joy and peace and motivation of God. And then it's very easy to follow God. And after I was filled with the Holy Spirit in 1998, I spent a lot of time praying. And I found that I can experience His joy anytime. And I can experience His love too. So it's much easier for me now to get close to God than before. Now I don't feel dry at all. I don't feel dry at all. When I come to God, I always feel nourished, strengthened, encouraged, comforted. I always experience that. So it's very easy for me to follow God. I can wait for the Lord for one hour, two hours, three hours, and I can enjoy it totally. No anxiety, totally in peace. When the closer we are to God, the easier it is for us to follow God. So it's very important for us to take care of little problems. And when I come close to the Lord, the Lord speaks to us all, to me all the time. And tell me how, how I have hurt some people in the past, how I have mistreated some people in the past, and God let me feel their feelings. And then I say, Lord, please forgive me. If I have a chance, I would you know, do it to the person, to really to love the person and, and ask for forgiveness. But if the person is not here anymore, I'll say, Lord, I try my best to love the people around me. So. The Lord speaks to us all the time, right? Yeah. So when we obey that voice all the time, then we can follow God more and more. And then we can follow strategies. What kind of strategies? God will give us. God has a wonderful plan. God's strategy is not for us first to jump into service. First to have close relationship. And then step by step, do the things in front of you. Do what you can do right now. And then you follow that step by step. And then gradually, God will give you a strategy. What does it mean to have strategies? Now some people could be busy doing this and that and this. All kinds of things serving God. They are serving God. But they are very busy. The mind is very busy. They may not see many results because they are too busy and the mind is not peaceful. But when people know what God wants them to do and ask God for the best method, the best way, and have the closest relationship with God, then the result will be much, much bigger. Do you believe that? Amen. When we have the strategy of God, the result can be much, much different. Isaiah 55, 9. Let's read that together. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. So, as far as the heavens are higher than, than the earth, so how, how high is the heaven? Right, very high, very high, right? Beyond our imagination. Even the physical heaven. Humankind cannot fly to the edge of, the, of this physical heaven. 
the physical sky, we cannot go to the limit. But the spiritual heaven that is so far beyond. Why? When we compare our lives with the, you know, the, the life of God, we find that many Christians have problems, worry, uh, emotions, sins, all kinds of problems. So compared to God, all these things, all these problems, all these sins are very low in the kingdom of God, right? And many Christians live like that without knowing it. And they thought they are making, already they are making use of the life that they, they say, that I, I try my best. But actually, when we live in sin, when, then we are wasting our lives, a lot of efforts. For instance, let me use one example. When we give offering to the Lord, a lot of times people say, oh, it's time again to give offering. Oh, I have to give some money. Now, if we do that, do you think God is very pleased with our offering? Now, two persons might be giving the same amount, but one person say, Lord, you're so wonderful. I want to give my offering to you. I want to offer it to you wholeheartedly, joyfully. Now, let me ask you. They both offer the same amount of money, but with whom is God pleased? Yeah, the one who gives uh, cheerfully. So, two persons could be doing the same thing, but one person is pleased. You know, pleasing to the Lord. That, but one person, he does a lot, but is wasting his effort in a degree. So a lot of people actually wasted the money when they offer with a grudging heart, <laughs> right? They they offering the same amount, but they are wasting the effort. But if they offered wholeheartedly, it would be much different, right? Yes. So the same way, some people serve God and say, "Oh, I have to do it again." Oh, I'm in no mood. I have no strength today. Has that happened to you? Oh, why do I have to help the person? The person is so weak. Oh, it's, it takes so much effort to help this person. Sometimes we have, you know, feelings like that. So all these are ripping away from the perfect plan of God, right? So those are the human ways. The human ways to offer is to say, Oh, to offer again. Oh, why do I have to do that? <laughs> that way, that's the earthly way, right? Do you want to live the earthly way or the heavenly way? Heavenly way. So God's way, God's mindset, His thoughts are so much higher than ours. So following the plan of God is every day, Lord Jesus, teach me how to be, uh, how to live my life in Your way, how to have your life, how to you have your way, the way you talk. Let me ask you, Jesus said, his teaching came from where? What he heard from the Father, right? When he heard the Father say it, then he would say it. When he saw the Father do it, then he would do it. So Jesus, he is God, but he's so humble. He would not do anything out of his own. Then he will see the Father do it, and then he will do it. Because he is in heaven at the same time. On earth and in heaven. So he, he saw G, uh, the Father doing it, and then he will do it. And then he heard the Father say it, and then he will say it. Now this is God's plan for us. That will say, yes, I will say it in God's way. So the next time when you talk to people in a very rough way, uh, with emotions, you say, wow, is that God's way? Please forgive me. And give me faith. It's very important to have faith. What does it mean to have faith? To say, when God does things, I don't have to worry. Can you say, when God does things, I don't have to worry. I can trust Him. So, I can trust and trust my life to God. I can follow Him totally. I can relax. It's okay. God will take care of all my problems. Say it's okay. God can take care of my problems. Now, I have problems too. Sometimes I have worries too. Even now, sometimes, not this moment, but sometimes I find that I have, you know, worries come up. And then I'll say, I just trust in God. It doesn't matter. If I die, it doesn't matter. But I won't die. You know, God will preserve my life. But, but I say, even if I die, it's okay. Things happen to me, it's okay. 
No problem. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So that's faith. Whatever happens to me, it doesn't matter. But God will not cause those things to happen. But I, you know, I prepare for the worst. But God will not give me the worst. But I say, even if the worst happens to me, it doesn't matter. That way, I'm totally relaxing God and trusting God. And then, okay, when your boss says something unpleasant to you, then you can say, well, it doesn't matter. Amen. You know, in the past, some people have said things to hurt me many times. And then, you know, it, it makes me unpleasant. And then a thought came to me. I said, I have said to the Lord, I'm, I'm ready to accept persecution. If one day I'm put in prison for Jesus, I'm ready to accept that. But then when people said unpleasant things to me, and then I, I said one day to me, well, this is not as bad as being persecuted. Let me ask you, the way your boss says treat you or your family members treat you, is it as bad as when you are persecuted for your faith? When you know, you're put in prison, beaten up by people, is it as bad as that? No. So I said, that's not so bad. I mean, I'm ready for persecution. Can I take this you know, mistreatment? Can I take it? Oh, it's okay. Actually, it really doesn't hurt me that bad if I don't take it seriously, right? So I said, it's okay. I can just relax and I thank God I have all the blessings of God. That way, you're always in peace and always you know think of God all the time I think of God all the time I when I'm in the restroom I love the Lord I praise the Lord or I wait for the Lord uh, when I'm on the way I'm always praising God or reading the Bible uh, my mind I try to be all the time thinking of God loving God all the time and I pray that you all do that and that's the first step to follow the perfect plan of God. And then when God speaks to you how to take care of your problems, then take care of your problems in our lives. And then when God tells you what to do to serve Him, then you follow Him. So step by step, and then you can go higher. When you have more training, what does it mean? Many Christians put a lot of effort to serve God, but the, the result is not so good because they have not been trained well. And also, they don't have the peace of God, they don't have the wisdom. We need to grow in every area. We need to grow in the relationship with God, in wisdom, in direction, in love and care, in our personality. We need to grow, have growth in all these areas. And then the result would, would be very, very different. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Then when you talk, the way you talk will affect people. Your faith will affect people. And when you pray for people, you, you'll see how people experience God. And I pray that this morning we'll all remember this. Remind ourselves, I can live in the love of God. Can you say it? I can live in the love of God. I can live in the perfect plan of God. I want to live in His love and His peace. I can enjoy His love all the time. I can enjoy His relationship. I can be affected by Him. I can follow His perfect plan. No one can replace me. God has a unique plan for my life. I can enjoy this moment. I can enjoy this moment. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. <laughs> I can enjoy this moment. Oh, hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Do you enjoy every moment of life? Yes! Amen! I'm asking you, as a matter of fact, are you enjoying your life every day like that? Amen! Well, if you are, that's wonderful. But from morning to night time, are we all enjoying His presence all the time? I pray that we are. We are doing that. Okay, so today, remember, every day, say, I am living in the perfect plan of God. Now, I'm going to lead you in a time of waiting for the Lord. How to wait for the Lord? Now, we have different kinds of prayer. We can have praise and worship and love for God. 
So that you have done for years. To wait for the Lord, what does it mean? Because sometimes we just pray and praise that we are doing all the prayer ourselves. Yes. We're not giving God a chance to speak to us. So to wait for the Lord means just to think of God, concentrate on God, but in a relaxed, passive way, receiving message from God. Now, sometimes you don't, you say, I don't have any message. It doesn't matter. Actually, the first goal is not to receive message. The first goal is just to re re uh, relax in God and just to stand in front of God like little Samuel. Just to stand in front of God, waiting on the Lord. Just serving God with our presence. So just relax and don't say, when will God speak to me? Don't ask anything like that. One day, God might speak to you in, in uh, many ways, but then when you wait for the Lord, it's actually, actually it's a time first to help us to be quiet. I found that now I'm more quiet inside, more peaceful. So the first step is just to enjoy it all. And do not use the mind as much, but use the heart. Just love God. Just enjoy God.